Hi friends, I'm Ryan Lestrange with a Monday Word, and my Monday Word for you is govern in worship. God told me that 2019 is a season to build it. We're going to build our families, our ministries, our financial enterprises, and build the kingdom of God. We're going to tackle the mountains of culture with kingdom influence, with kingdom power, and one of the building blocks is prophetic insight. But we've got to understand that prophets and prophetic people, apostles and apostolic people, kingdom citizens have to value worship. Worship is a governmental activity. When we invoke and invite the presence of God and the presence of God comes on the scene, the kingdom in all of its weight, in all of its glory, in all of its majesty begins to unfold. Miracles break out when worship goes forth. Deliverance breaks out when worship goes forth. Freedom comes. The Bible said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When the presence of God comes, the governmental force of the kingdom comes. And and that's why prophets, prophetic people, those that love the mind of God have got to love the presence of God. God never sends a man or woman to an assignment empty. He fills them with his presence, but worship is the conduit through which the presence of God travels. Let me say it again. Worship is the conduit through which the presence of God travels. That's why the devil hates worshipers. He hates worship. But prophets and prophetic people have got to understand and value worship. In 1 Samuel 10, 5, uh, Samuel, the prophet, gave these instructions to Saul. He said, as you approach the town, you're going to meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with the lyres, the tambourines, the flutes, the harps being played before them, and they will be prophesying. You see, their musical engagement unlocked the mind of God. If we want to hear the word of the Lord and govern, we've got to worship. If we want to have the presence of God break a region open, we've got to worship. If we want to have the glory of God come and raise the dead, we've got to worship. But we can't just worship uh, methodically. We've got to worship with a prophetic intent and an apostolic authority on it. That we are worshiping to bring the presence of God to regions, to people, and to places. Maybe your family is going through great distress. Govern in worship. Lay on your face in your living room and cry aloud and say, Jesus, I glorify you and worship you. Begin to lift up your sound. David was rejected by his fathers, his brothers, and in the field, he began to worship God. He came to the palace because he governed in worship. I am telling you there is a bold prophetic generation arising that says we're going to worship God unashamedly. We're going to worship God loudly. We're going to worship God uh, uh, with vibrance. We're going to worship God uh, being completely delivered from the opinions of men. And the devil will always send a religious critic. My One of the most vivid examples of this is David. He's king now. God brought him out of the rejection, brought him out of the field and he's dancing until his garments come off. And his, uh, his wife, Michael, a religious woman, is staring in the window and despises his freedom. Do you know bound people will always despise the, the activities of free people because their freedom reminds them of their bondage. And Michael became barren. David was not intimate with her anymore after that time because he made a choice. I'm going to choose the presence of God over human love and your approval. And Michael, who could have been right in the middle of God's glory, stayed outside the glory and became barren. People and places that don't embrace governing worship become barren. They stop producing fruit. They stop being at the forefront of the move of God and they become a shell of the potential and the promise of God. So understand you need the presence of God this season like never before. Father, I thank you for governing people. People who love your presence. People who are unashamed, unafraid to radically, boldly and vibrantly worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you for the Davidic people arising in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.